What's going on, everybody? I'm Josue from Josue's Exotics, as you guys know. And I make, like to make videos about my reptiles and amphibians and how I take care of them, just like what we're going to see here in this live stream today. And we're doing something a little bit different. Like I said, try to give you guys some educational content. That way you can interact with me in the live comments. Come hang out and do whatever you guys want to do for this little bit of time that we're on the live stream. So appreciate you guys coming in and hanging out. We don't have anybody here right now. I'm pretty sure somebody will join in eventually when they see the notification on here. So we're going to get on into it. And as you guys can tell from the title of today's video, we're going to be talking about the Cuban tree frog, which is a pretty cool species of tree frog. I believe they're one of the largest tree frogs in the world. Um, and obviously, they come from Cuba. So, I mean, it's a name, you know. And as you can tell, we're repping the old cowboy hat today. And we got our shades on. We're doing our thing. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get on into it, guys. And we will get to it as before. So, booyah, here we go, guys. So, if you guys do not know, the Cuban tree frog is a very large species of tree frog here. Let me give you guys let me go back one slide for you. So, yeah, here you go. Here's the Cuban tree frog here, guys. It's a super awesome looking frog. I mean, they're kind of plain looking colored as far as like that goes with them, but they are some pretty awesome tree frogs. So, uh, their scientific name is Osteopilus septentrionalis. So once again, Osteopilus septentrionalis is the scientific name of this guy. It's also known as a giant tree frog or the marble tree toad. Uh, and they are a highly invasive species. Uh, the reason being is these guys are na native to Cuba and like, you know, the Med not the Mediterranean, but the... Um, but the uh, the Gulf of Mexico and that tropical whole area in there, uh, like Puerto Rico, Cuba, what Jamaica, Dominican Republic, that whole area, uh, the Caribbean. Uh, so these guys actually made it all the way to Florida, and they're now an invasive species here through uh, shipping trip, uh, shipping ships uh, with fruit and different things like that. They hit rides, and now they came here. So these guys, like I said, their geographic range ranges from anywhere from Cuba, South Florida, some spots in Georgia, some spots in North Carolina. There's also some spots like in, what is that, Colorado? I think that's Colorado right there. I'm not too sure. See the Colorado or Wyoming, I think. Yeah, because Utah's here, Colorado, I think Wyoming, something like that. I think there's some spots in California. And looks like some spots in Washington State and over in like Maine, Massachusetts area as well. So these guys are some highly adaptable frogs that can get into a whole lot of stuff. Uh, looks like there's some in Texas too as well, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. So they are some pretty awesome frogs. We got a comment here. Uh, Martin Hajnik, what's going on? Thank you for stopping by in the live stream, hanging out with us. Make sure you hit that like button down below. Share this video out if you want to see some more content like this. And that definitely let me know. So appreciate you coming by, hanging out with us, Martin, for sure, for sure. So let's get back into it. So like I said, scientific name, Osteopilus, uh, uh, what was it? Osteopilus septentrionalis. So to give you guys a little bit of a description of the Cuban tree frog here. I got some information. Uh, Cuban tree frogs are one of the largest tree frogs in the world, and they originate from Cuba, obviously. Unfortunately, due to owners letting their frogs escape, they are now populate parts of Georgia, Florida, and other, and other spots like we just seen, and they're considered an invasive species. So male tree frogs are very loud during the mating season. They give off a short bark sound that sounds similar to a dog, and they would do this the majority of the night from May to September. So if you plan on keeping a male in your room, you may want to change your mind. So Cuban tree frogs are, are fun to own, whether this is your first frog or you've been raising frogs for decades. So uh, these guys can get up to five inches long. So that's pretty huge, just considering the body. They're mostly gray and brown and green, and they can change color to help camouflage throughout their su surroundings and other things like that, which makes them a really awesome frog, in my opinion. They're also really wide, uh, but this is not the case for this tree frog generally. 
they have a slender bodies for the size, powerful legs for letting them jump great distances. And on they have sticky pads on the end of each toe because that's generally pretty endemic of tree frogs, as you can see, kind of with their toes here. Uh, so, and that's what helps them to actually stick on to things and hold on to things with that. Uh, just like their other cousins, like the green tree frog, squirrel tree frog, and all the rest of those guys as well. So as far as it comes to like purchasing this type of frog, don't hope to be really holding it too much. Uh, no frogs really enjoy really being held uh, because they, they do have very sensitive skin and they can, uh, because uh, the word is actually, um, uh, what was it? But anyway, they have very poor skin and they have that easily allows things, chemicals and things to be transported back and forth. So uh, permeable. They have very permeable skin. Uh, so, yeah, it allows you can transfer chemicals super easily. So that's why you really don't want to handle these guys too much. So that way you can keep your frogs in a good as condition as you possibly can. So are they invasive is the next question that we are going to answer. Yes, they are invasive. Uh, the reason why they're invasive is because they eat other native smaller frogs. They eat like the green tree frogs, squirrel tree frogs. Really anything smaller than themselves, they normally can pretty much eat uh, because they, they don't really care. They just have a really huge appetite for food and things like that. Uh, so in Puerto Rico, the Cuban tree frog preys on the coqui frog. So if you don't know, the coqui frog is one of the most uh, endemic frogs or most like the coolest frogs in Puerto Rico because they actually make the coqui sound, which is obviously where they get their name from. Uh, so if I had a clip, I would play a little bit of that, but today we're talking about Cuban tree frog. So well, we're just going to keep it on that note, but a uh, super cool fact about the coqui frog, their scientific name is Eleutherodactylus coqui. So one more time as Eleutherodactylus coqui. So definitely guys go check that out. There's a picture of one here on the right side of the screen. So you guys go check that out for sure, for sure. Um, let's see, put my face back up here so you guys can see me talking, of course, as well. But do they make good pets? I believe they make really good pets. I've seen them pretty much every single day. Whenever it rains out here, they normally come out at nighttime. So uh, I think they'd be pretty good, pretty cool to have. So, yes, they're highly adaptable to many different environments and they have a huge appetite which makes really good things uh, for actual pet to have in captivity. Um, and they can also be housed together. So we'll get into that uh, just a little bit later on when we start talking about enclosures and different things like that. So that way you can get uh, something to actually keep these guys in if you want to do that as well. For sure. So, let's see, moving on, we have enclosure and setup. So this is going to be real cool to look at. I did a little bit of research in this, guys, because I was actually thinking about getting one to have for a video. I was going to try to actually catch one for today's video, but it didn't rain today, which is kind of odd for Florida. So why, why is that thing not? There we go. So focus on the face. There we go. But yeah, so I don't know why that I couldn't find one, but I'll definitely have one next time we get into a little bit more deeper detail with these guys. So that way you can guys go check them out and look online and get one for yourself too. So the enclosure uh, for the Cuban tree frog is there's normally, I have a 10 gallon rule because uh, I've kept a lot of different variations of frogs from tree frogs to uh, just your more uh, semi-aquatic frogs that live on land, live in water. I've had red-eyed tree frogs, dude, you name it, toads, anything. So generally a rule with most frogs is 10 gallons per frog. Uh, the reason being is they need their space so that way they don't get stressed out and they don't need to be on top of each other, especially if you're going to be housing more than one together. Uh, but with that 10 gallon rule, yeah, with that 10 gallon rule, what's up, uh, Auntie Sandra? Thank you for coming by, hanging out with me. And yeah, I was talking about the Coquie frog is one of my favorite ones as well. Uh, but thank you for stopping by, hanging out with us. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so with these guys, uh, like I said, 10 gallons per frog. But what you're going to need to do is if you're going to plan on like housing multiple frogs, they are arboreal, which is why I have that down here with the arboreal setup. 
So what arboreal means is they live in the trees and they normally don't live on the ground too often. So these guys' height is going to be something more of a thing than it would be with other kinds of more terrestrial frogs. So what I would recommend to get for this is I would get like 18 by 18 by 24, something like really, really tall, or either get you a 20 gallon tall aquarium. And this is probably going to give them enough up and down space, especially if you want to do like something bioactive. So that way these guys have plenty of room to walk around, play around, things like that. And if you haven't seen one of my other videos, uh, you can definitely go check that out. Where I did terrarium conversions where with just regular f fish tanks. And I've stood them up on their sides and make tops for the front. So that way you can have an actual tall style aquarium instead of a wide one like this. So I think I like that a whole lot more to do. Oh, well, I appreciate it, Martin. Um, uh, put that on the screen here. He says he appreciates the time I take to gather the information about these animals and make the effort to upload these PowerPoints. Uh, for sure, for sure. Because the reason why I do this is that way I can inform the public and get, you know, get more information out there about these guys. Because I know there's probably not a lot of information on Cuban tree frogs. So it'd be awesome to actually learn a little bit about them. And not only is it teaching myself, it's also giving me a reference where I can go back to and go rewatch these videos. So that way I can keep all my information up to date. So it's basically I'm making like a uh, mini encyclopedia for myself and for you guys. And you just get the access to view it as well. So then that's how I look at it with most of my videos. So that, and then that's kind of what keeps me interested in making these videos for everybody. But uh, also, if you guys are enjoying the video, if you're watching this live, uh, you can do it. Tell me how you like these videos down in the actual live chat. But if you're watching this actually outside uh, after the live stream is already over with, you can still watch this and do comments, and I would highly appreciate it if you guys would comment and tell me how you're liking these style videos instead of doing just regular videos, you know. But we'll keep on doing it like this because I do like the interaction with the people live as well. And like I said, you can always watch this if we can get it to show up in YouTube search and we get views that way as well. But moving back on to this, uh, the more space, the better for these frogs. So if you, if you have an adult-sized frog, I would probably start them out like a 20-gallon tall, like I said. The more space, the better. Since they're more active at night, they'll you'll probably you'll see how much how active these frogs are, and you'll need to give them more and more space. So, a bioactive is recommended for these guys. One for the humidity, uh, the reason being because they come from a really tropical environment, and that's how they can persist down here in South Florida so well. Uh, so, they're really high humidity animals, and you know they have to kind of stay around there so that way they can live a fulfilled life. And also a screen cover and lockable uh, lockable top is necessary since they are arboreal frogs. They can jump very, very well and get away from things and get out. And you don't want to be looking for your frog. I mean, unless you're just into that kind of thing. But I'm not. So moving on to like temperature and things like that for these guys. They tolerate a wide range of temperatures, really. Uh, let's give you guys some more information here. I got pulled up. So, Cuban tree frogs are tolerant for a wide range of temperatures, which is on, which is the reason why they make good captives. The ideal temperature during the day will probably range from 80 to 90 degrees, in my opinion. Uh, that's just general temperature, uh, just outside temperature, just and it's not blistering hot. Because anything in the hundreds is way too hot, in my opinion, even if it does get that hot outside. These frogs are probably hiding out, chilling out, like, you know, somewhere in a cooler environment, not in a 100 degree straight in the sun kind of deal so 80 to 90 degrees and if you, if, if you guys know anything else that i don't know if you see something that i missed in the video definitely do so in the comments and let me know live chat whichever one if you're watching after or during definitely let me know but this is just what i feel is the really best for these guys if you're going to keep them in captivity so uh around nighttime you know generally at night things do get cooler so Animals do appreciate a good temperature drop at night. Uh, this, I mean, this can be achieved simply by just turning off your lights or whatever you decide to be using for the lighting setup part of this on that. Uh, but UVB is not necessary for these guys. So if you're going to use a light to achieve like the optimal temperatures and things like that, or like a ceramic heat emitter, uh, what I would do is I would use, uh, since you're going to be doing a bioactive setup, you're going to have live plants in there. So the UVB, uh, a low wattage UVB bulb for the plants wouldn't be a bad idea, but you can also get you something like uh, what I use in most of my setups you see in some of my other videos. I use an LED floodlight, 
that's a daylight colored one that puts out UVB as well. And that gives you just enough heat to heat up the ambient area to around 80, 85 degrees. And it doesn't cause anything to get super duper hot. And like I said, I love using those. You can get them at Lowe's, anything like that. But also, if you guys want to check this out, uh, I do have a little bit of things down in the comments. So that way you guys can go check those out on Amazon. Uh, there's a couple of Amazon links for UVB lighting, substrate, uh, reptile, calcium, uh, reptivite, water conditioner, uh, decor, different things like that. So that way you guys can go check it out and you don't have to go anywhere. It's all right down in the description to go check that out, hit that. And I do get a little bit of, of a commission off the things you do buy off that if you click those Amazon links. And also have a 30-day free Amazon Prime membership. So if you guys want to check that out as well, if you want to get that stuff, there you go. You can get it in two days. So definitely check that out with the Amazon 30 day free membership. And after that, they'll probably charge it. So I'd probably leave if you want to do that. That way to be free. So, like I said, nighttime temperatures drop around 70 degrees, and UVB is not necessary unless you got live plants in there. So, moving on to let's check our comments. Yep. The coqui frog is native to Puerto Rico. That is true. And it's a very beautiful place. I would highly recommend anybody go visit that uh, for sure. So moving on to humidity. Uh, these guys are obviously live in a humid environment since they're coming from Cuba, uh, which is a very tropical climate. Uh, so their humidity can actually range from 60 to 90%. Uh, which is a little bit higher than most things uh, throughout most of the year because Cuban tree frogs are native to those areas. Uh, the daily misting uh, or two will keep your humidity high enough. And plastic wrap or glass placed over part of the screen or something like like covering up half that will help keep the humidity inside your enclosures and things like that. And that's another reason why I said if you do the live plants, that'll definitely help to keep humidity up in the environment that you're trying to create for your frogs. Um, but yeah, guys. That's probably what you're going to need there. Uh, but as far as like daily misting, uh, you have misters, you have misting systems, you have fogging systems. I personally just use a reptile mister and I have a reptile fogger that I was using for my dart frog. So those are really good options. I would definitely go, guys, go check that out. I do have some of that link down below. Uh, so links in the description. So if you guys want to check that out, it'll definitely be there for you. Uh, another thing is you want to invest in a very good hygrometer. Uh, hygrometers actually measure ambient uh, air humidity and things like that. And you could probably get one with a temp, uh, does temperature and it does humidity. Uh, those would be really, really good. I do have some that does both. They're linked down in the description as well. So you can guys can get you some of those. They are very small. Uh, they don't really be in, they're not really in the way. You can just get you like some Velcro, Velcro or hook and loop tape squares and you can just stick them on, stick them on your terrarium. Super easy to use and they're digital. So I would definitely uh, get you guys one of those. As far as water goes, a large water bowl of clean water should be available at all times for these guys. Cuban tree frogs, they they often soak in it during the night and the water should be changed pretty much daily uh, or whenever it appears dirty. So uh, if you're going to be using tap water, I would make sure to use a dechlorinator. And I believe we got a link for some dechlorinators down in the description as well. Uh, we're going to be using one called Reptisafe. Uh, it only takes like a couple drops to do like maybe a whole gallon of water. But it's a very good thing to use to help dechlorinate and keep the best quality water for your animals. Since, like I said, frogs have a semi-permeable skin. Uh, these guys can transfer chemicals really easily. So you want to make sure that you don't have any of the fluorides and bad things that's in the water and chlorine, obviously. Uh, that's not good for your actual animal. So... Moving on to food, I would say uh, these guys are not very picky eaters. So uh, with food and things, you won't really have to worry about getting nothing super duper crazy. Uh, these guys can be fed crickets, mealworms, wax worms, horn worms, like you name it. The list goes on. You can feed them slugs. Like do they eat literally anything? Like I said, they eat their own kind frogs. Which is another reason why you can't really, you can house them together. But whenever you're housing frogs together like this, you want to make sure that you house ones of similar size together. So they, yeah, they have to be around the same size. If not, they're going to prey upon each other and you want to have some missing animals. And you don't want to spend your money on animals that just want them to eat each other. It's like a real expensive food option. 
So, you know. Uh, as far as calcium multivitamin, I have, uh, like I said, it's Reptivite and RepCal. Uh, those are linked down in the description. Those are really, really good reptile supplements. So that way you can make sure they get their vitamins in. There's D3 that's been added into it. Uh, it has calcium in it. The Rep RepCal is also phosphorus-free and phosphate-free. Uh, which can be a big deal for a lot of animals that have a build, build up of phosphates inside of their body. So I would definitely, guys, go check that out and get you some of that. And it'd be really awesome, man. But other than that, I mean, you know, this is pretty much all the information you really need to know about really keeping these guys because they're really awesome tree frogs, in my opinion. And I love looking at them. And next, like I said, next time it rains, I'll try to catch one outside and do another video. Uh, you've seen the short video I did a little while ago with the super huge frog that was actually a cuban tree frog so you guys go check that out and see one live uh you know in the natural environment kind of deal and i'll keep on making videos about all these reptiles i'm seeing down here in florida if i can get a good pit get some good footage of some iguanas and stuff i'll probably have that coming out for you guys as well because the iguanas are really cool in my opinion i love sitting there watching iguanas uh they're pretty much like if you have a stray cat issue or like stray dog issue in your town. That's pretty much what iguanas are in South Florida. They're pretty much dogs and stray cats because they are everywhere. I was talking to my sister on the phone yesterday, and there was three of them just sitting right across the street, just in the yard basking around five o'clock in the afternoon. So they're really, really cool animals. I mean, they they're not really that bad. They I mean they can bite you, but more likely they won't. You just got to be able to catch them. So I'm probably going to try to see what I can do and get one to bring on here to show you. There's also red iguanas other than the green iguanas that you normally see. Everybody have. I got to see one of those, which is pretty awesome. But uh, I, hopefully I'll probably be able to go out and go herping this afternoon, depending on what the weather looks like and depending on how hot it is because it is hot. Hot. But anyway, so... Let's see where we at now. So, guys, so we appreciate you guys coming by, hanging out with us. Uh, I noticed what a super duper long live stream. I just want to get on here and talk about the Cuban tree frog, do a little care guide video on the live stream here, interact with you guys, and hopefully this video can start showing up YouTube search, get some more views after the actual live stream's over, and we can keep it on going and keep it on growing. But as you know, I'm Host Sway from Host Sway's Exotics, and I will see you guys on another video. Peace out.